Okay. Um, I think this is the last one we're doing. This is this is the last one. I'm okay. I'm okay, except now I realized after we're done with this, I cease to be. I mean, my future self continues to be. He'll be back in a video. He'll be back from London. I'll be like, hey, guys, I'm Teching 101. I really enjoyed London, but but I'm gone. I'm, I'm gone. You'll never see this version of me again. Lost to time. It's like the doctor and his regenerations, you know, going to London. So therefore, England in general, you know, it's like, do, 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 do. It's like when David Tennant, uh, you know, at the end of time, you know, he was like, you know, oh, yeah, I might regenerate, but it feels like dying. You know, I'm gone and some new version of me is sauntering off. Isn't that like what life is, really? Is, is like, I'm 31 right now as I'm recording this. I'm not the same as I was when I was 21 or, or, or 11 or 1. Like, we're, we're all different people all throughout our lives. And that's okay. That's good. You gotta keep moving on so as you remember the person you used to be. Matt Smith was the greatest doctor, wasn't he? He really was. He really was, right? Like, 11 forever. Okay. Uh, what are we talking about today? Uh, manga memories. Yes. The memories of the big three. Twas a different time. Twas a better time. Some would even say the golden age of manga. Naruto, One Piece, Bleach. The Triforce. The Trinity of manga. Hey everybody, how you doing? Teching101 here. And you know what? I've been feeling rather nostalgic as of late. I've been looking back at the springtime of my youth. Um, I think what really did it is the fact it's 2018 now and I had to realize, like, holy crap, like 2008, a year which I can remember rather well. I know where I was at. I was a sophomore in high school. I knew what I was doing. I knew the stuff I was interested in. Yeah, that was a decade ago. A decade, as in 10 years have passed since 2008, a year I can remember rather well. I'm like, holy crap, I'm getting old. I'm going to be 25 in a few months. The quarter-life crisis, man, that shit hits you like a freight train. But, um, yeah, something else I remember very distinctly about 2008, about my sophomore year in high school and those halcyon days, is that was the year I discovered, like, Shonen Jump, like, weekly releases of, of manga. You know, that's when I started reading it, like, every week. Uh, up until that point, it was like... Like, um, you know, buying the Tonko Bonds or uh, reading it in, like, the Shonen Jump magazine, uh, the uh, American release. Uh, back then, uh, the United States actually did have Viz Media put out a trimmed-down version of Shonen Jump, and they sold it in, like, Walmart, and you could buy it in places like that. Um, discontinued that many years now. It's been just all online. Um, but I remember those, and I still have a few copies of them somewhere, probably buried away in my closet right now. Um, so for this episode of Real Talk, I really wanted to focus on talking about the big Big Three, the original Big Three when I was growing up. I mean, Shonen Jump's been around since, like, the 1970s, so there's not even close to being, like, the original Big Three. That would have included, like, probably, like, Lupin the Third and, like, Dragon Ball, like, back in, like, the 70s and the 80s and everything. But, um, the Big Three of my generation, I guess I should say, uh, from order from least popular to most popular, we have Bleach, then we have Naruto, and then we have One Piece, and these were the three that everybody talked about, even though Bleach was the one I think it was the least popular, like a lot of people criticized it, that was still, people talked about it all the time, these were three very long-running manga in Shonen Jump, uh, Bleach lasted almost uh, 700 chapters, you had Naruto that lasted, um, I think about the same, no, no, I think it ended out at 700, right, no, Naruto ended out right at 700, um, and then, of course, you have One Piece, which is still, you know, running today in Shonen Jump with nearly 900 chapters. We're getting very close to that. So, I guess I want to talk about how I personally got into each of these series. Uh, you know, what the climate was like back then. And this is going to go into a little bit about me discussing the YouTube anime community the way it was back then in, like, the early days. YouTube came around in, like, 2005. Uh, it wasn't really until 06, 07 when people really started to figure out what, like, what YouTube is. Like, it's a platform that anybody could just put out their videos for the whole world to see. And you started actually seeing people, like, little niches, little, little communities popping up. Like, hey, we can film video games and put it on YouTube, or hey, we can play music, or hey, we can talk sports, or hey, we can talk politics. 
and sure enough, it's like, hey, we can talk about anime and manga and talk about it on the internet. So this is going to be a story about that. So as I stated, in 2008, that's when I discovered, like, the internet. That's when my family first got high-speed internet, I guess I should say. We were using dial-up until that point. I know, freaking Flintstone, right? Um, the, the weird thing is that really, uh, that's something else I'm kind of trying to, you know, come to grips with, is that most teenagers now probably grew up, you know, they were born, you know, in an era where dial-up internet was, like, right about to die. So, like, a 15-year-old kid right now probably never even had to deal with that ever. But, um, yeah, we got high-speed internet, and I started really reading manga on the internet. Now, up until this point, I was already into Bleach. Um, I began watching Bleach on Adult Swim, I think around 2007. Um, that's when I really got into it, and then the manga, what was going on was the beginning of the fake Karakura Town arc, so the beginning with the war with Aizen. Um, I think we had just wrapped up the fights with the, uh, lieutenants and the, uh, like, the Fraxion from Baragon, and now we were getting into the actual battle. Uh, all of the captains versus the Espada. That's what we were really getting into. But, of course, that wasn't the thing I was really interested in because right around this time, it was also Ik Ukiora versus Ichigo. Um, that's when I really... That was, like, the big wow moment. And I really... That was the fight that really got me... Like, the whole cliffhanger idea of manga, you know, that feeling that you get, it, it's, I'm so accustomed to it now, because I've been doing this for so long, I've been talking about mangas for so long, there's always cliffhangers at the ends of chapters, and you have to wait a week in order to find out for one, like, last week with One Piece, it's like, Luffy's going Snake Man, oh, I wonder what it's gonna look like. The fight between Ichigo and Ukiora was that fight, when, you know, Ukiora raises up his sword and he goes into his resurrection, and you have to wait a week to find out what's gonna happen, and I remember that whole week, I remember having dreams about it, I remember having dreams about how, oh, I wonder if it's gonna look like, I remember distinctly having a dream that Ukiora's Resurrection was going to look like a giant snake, of course it was a bat, uh, that was more of Sung Sung's thing was snake, but I remember that, I remember feeling the hype train for these series, I wasn't used to that yet, I wasn't used to being like, here's a massive cliffhanger, now next week, and now next week, here's another massive cliffhanger, um, you know, that whole fight with Ichigo, there was a point where Ichigo got, like, a hole blasted through his chest, and it's like, whoa, is he dead? Gotta find out next week! So that, that was one, that was a big one. I remember reading manga in the computer lab at my high school. I remember one time one of my uh, teachers came up to me, and she was just like, are you allowed to be reading that stuff? Because she had no idea what it was. I would bring my Tonka Bonds to school and I would read them. And people would ask me, Hey Matt, what are you reading? And I understand they're not going to understand what manga is. So I just said, I'm reading um, the best way I could describe it to a, to a, like a, to a muggle, I guess I should say. A manga muggle would be, I'm reading backwards Japanese comic books. I didn't really need to clarify the fact it was read backwards, I just did it to confuse people, and they were like, okay, and then they just kind of walked away. So I'd be reading my manga in school, but a teacher saw me reading manga online once. Um, I remember distinctly, it was the fight between Yamamoto and Aizen. It was when Yamamoto grabbed Aizen and went Ito Kaso and giant explosion, and I'm sitting there reading that, and, and, and she's like, you allowed to read that stuff? And, and I was just like, yep. The other teachers let me do it, and she's like, huh, okay then, and that's how I got away with that. I was an alright kid in high school. I didn't really cause a lot of trouble, so I guess she was like, okay, fine, I guess. There's not, it's not porn, so I was like, oh, fine. Um, I remember my friends making fun of me of that. I remember getting distinctly made fun of for reading a chapter of Toriko once. One of my, uh, one of my, not really friends, he just kind of turned and saw what I was, uh, reading, and he was just like, you know, called me some choice names, and then you know, whatever, went back to talking to his other friend, I'm like, well, whatever, I like the story, and that's all that matters. Um, so Bleach was something that, that was the manga, because I was already watching the anime, that's like the first manga I hopped on online, you know? So, Naruto is rather interesting. Naruto, I watched as an anime when it came out in America, like in Toonami, this was like 2005, I think, that Naruto was released. I watched it for about maybe two or three years when it was on Toonami. I think Toonami got taken off the air eventually, like in 2008, and after that I stopped kind of watching it. Um, but the problem with that is, you know, I think the anime in America, it ended long before even the time skip occurred. Like, Shippuden was still a long ways away by the time the anime ended in America. Um, there was still some filler arc stuff left before we would even get to Shippuden. Meanwhile, the manga at this point in 2008, they were, like, balls deep in Naruto's fight against Pain. 
So I missed a lot of stuff. And that was really the first thing that really taught me the daunting task of binge reading, of getting caught up with a series. Because here I am, barely on like chapter 250 or whatever. Naruto's already up to like chapter 400 something. I'm like, I got like 200 chapters to read. How am I ever going to get caught up? But nonetheless... Even though I didn't know, have any idea what was going on, I had no idea what was going on with Naruto and his sage mode, or I had no idea what was up with Pain and what his abilities were, I had no idea what was up with the other members of the Akatsuki, no idea, but I started reading it, you know, nonetheless, I just, do I just dove right in into an arc that I knew nothing about, and I still enjoyed it, I enjoyed Naruto, probably Naruto going the Six Tails, rage mode against uh, Pain, that was something I did understand, like, oh, that's the Nine-Tailed Fox, Naruto, okay, I guess Naruto still has that, that's good to know, and, and so that, that was a big moment I remember watching from that. Um, One Piece was another series where I remember, I, I, I watched it, in the four kids dub of the anime in, in the United States, it was on, like, the Fox Box. Remember the Fox Box? But that, of course, ended right after Alabaster. Right after Alabaster, there was the Rainbow Mist, and then Funimation picked it up with uh, Jaya, and, like, I think we made it halfway through Skypea, and then that's where I, that's where I, I stopped watching, because that was the epic. Keep, keep in mind... A high-speed internet, but the internet was still not as great. It's not even close to as great it is now. So the concept of watching anime... I, I remember I could do that at school. I, I remember watching a few episodes of like One Piece at school because the internet was better, but I had a hard time watching it at home. Um... But anyway, yeah, with One Piece, it was like Naruto. I had to just dive right in. Uh, it was in the middle of Impel Down. Uh, and, and the cool thing is, despite the fact I've, I've skipped over half of Skypea, Long Ring Long Land, Water 7, Annie's Lobby, uh, Thriller Bark, Saba Ondi, Amazon Lily, and now it's like all those arcs I skipped over. had no idea what was up with the new Straw Hats, Frankie and Brooke. They were completely new characters to me. Um, you know, the character development that occurred between, like, Robin at Innie's Lobby? I had no idea. So, I started re reading Impel Down, but I'll tell you what, Impel Down, to this day, it is still my favorite arc of One Piece. And I'll also tell you something, I think I really lucked out reading that arc for a few reasons. Number one, Luffy was kind of separated from the crew. So... It's true, I didn't understand anything about what, what was going on with Frankie or Brooke, but I didn't really have to understand that because they weren't in that arc. Also, the character development with Robin and everything, I didn't have to worry about that because she wasn't in that arc. But you know who was in that arc, aside from Luffy? A lot of older characters from earlier on, like Buggy and Mr. Three and Bong Clay, Mr. Two and Crocodile and Mr. One. Those characters I did know about because they were in the 4Kids dub. Granted, the 4Kids dub butchered their characters and made them spout really childish puns and jokes and gave them really crappy voice actors except for crocodile crocodile had a pretty pretty good four kids va but i'm like all right i'm like skipping over 400 chapters or whatever or some such but i at least know who these characters are so they were familiar to me anyway so you know i wouldn't recommend it to somebody like if you want to get started with one piece just start reading impel down it'll make perfect sense that was something that just really clicked for me given what parts of the story i've read already of course i eventually did go back and i watched the funimation anime kind of filled out the gaps there and it took a while it took a long time i've heard people binge watch binge reading One Piece, getting all caught up with the series in like a few days or a few weeks. You know what? If you want to subject yourself to that, if you think you can tolerate that, go for it. But I really took my time with it. It probably took me the better part of a year before I was entirely caught up with everything because I really wanted to go back and rewatch things from 4Kids because 4Kids did a crappy job, so I wanted to watch the Funimation version. They skipped over arcs like Little Garden and the Laboon arc. I wanted to, I wanted to really find out what was happening with that. It probably took me, honestly, over a year to get completely caught up with everything. Um... But eventually I did, and now I'm reviewing it all weekly on my YouTube channel, and I regret nothing. Um, so as for the YouTube community back then, man, I remember... The, the person I remember watching that got me into the whole concept of manga reviewing uh, and getting in is like, oh, I just read the chapter of a manga. I want to see what other people are talking about because I'm hyped for it. I want to see if other people are hyped for it. Uh, that was the insane game freak. He was a guy on you. I, I'm sure he's still doing. I'm actually, I know for a fact he's still doing stuff. He's still on YouTube. I don't know if he does manga reviews anymore, but I, that's the guy that kind of I remember watching. And it was just, keep in mind, this was before HD cameras were prevalent. Nowadays, the name of the game is HD. You got to have 
have at least an HD camera or else like you're just kind of like he's like pushed off to the side but back then in like the 2009 2010 ish um you know they weren't like super easy to come across they weren't like easy you know like affordable not a lot of people had them so i remember the insane game freaks videos they were just a guy in his bedroom i remember it was rather poorly lit and he was just talking about chapters and i'm thinking this is cool it's it, even though the video style like the you know the actual video and the audio might not be great it's a community that's what it is it's like hey Let's all get together and talk about the chapter. What are you excited for? What aren't you excited for? What do you like about this character? What do you hate that this character did? That was kind of my first introduction to that. Um, and I started my YouTube channel in 2009, um, but I did not start talking about manga and anime until 2011. I took two years. I didn't really... I was watching people. I watched For Neverworld. I watched um, uh, the Insane Game Freak I mentioned. Uh, there was another guy. Oh, I forget his name. It was another YouTuber. I, I I can't remember. He does. He has been around in a long time. I can't remember his name. I remember what he looks like, but I can't remember his name. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, but yeah, so there was like three or four manga reviewers I watched, and I was on YouTube talking about video games. Finally, after about two years, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna go for it. I'm just gonna go crazy. So um, I stopped talking. I was like, I'm just gonna start talking about manga because I think I could do it. These people are doing it. I like watching these people. Let's start doing it. And I picked out my. Well, I like Bleach. That's the kind of one I've been with the longest, and I, I know the whole series, I know the characters, let's talk about Bleach. And then that's where it all started, and that was back in freaking June of 2011 when I started talking about manga on YouTube. Here we are, February 2018, I got freaking over 225,000 subs on YouTube, all these fans, uh, you know, it's, it's just been great. I'm going to cons now. I'm here on Viewster doing this, and the people at Viewster have been really nice to me at doing this. Um, so I, I've come a long way, and um, the climate has certainly changed since then. Of course, there's way, way more people in the anime community now on YouTube all talking about manga. People have come, people have gone, people have left, people have come back, and then they've left again. Uh, but I'm still around. I'm still around. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? I don't know. Maybe I hit my apex. Maybe from here on out, I'm just going to deadline. Or here on out, I'm just going to... I don't know. But I'm here, and I'm doing it. So I guess uh, I'm, I'm, I, I got to thank every little aspect of those little stories I just told you. You know, uh, getting high-speed internet, discovering manga, reading the entire One Piece manga from Square One, jumping into Naruto when I had no idea what was going on, you know, my friends making fun of me in computer class, um, you know, I'm gonna show them, I'm gonna do this. I guess I kind of did, I don't know. I, I feel like if I still met my friends from, from that class, I'm like, hey man, I'm on the internet now and I'm popular and I talk about manga, they'd still probably call me the same exact choice words and like shove me aside and keep on walking. It's like, yeah, whatever. Um... But yeah, all that stuff made me where I am now, and so I appreciate every bit of it. Um, that's the episode, I guess. Thanks thanks for watching another episode of Real Talk. I think I'll call this one Manga Memories, or Memories of the Big Three. I'll come up with some kind of poetic thing. Thanks for watching, everybody. This will be Teching 101 signing out. And remember, remember the original Holy Trinity. Once again, not even close to the original Holy Trinity. Our Holy Trinity.